plugin development in Ruby. So I, I mentioned this uh, in, in audio today, and then you know there was this audio talk on this room about this Ruby developers and so on. So one of the effort that's going on, it, uh, I think for about a half a year now, was to let you develop new plugins in Ruby. So this, uh, as far as where the credit is due, so this isn't uh, my my effort. It's done. It's being driven by the guy named Charles Loyal. Um, Loyal. He lives in Texas, and he also is the guy who designed this logo. So in various ways, we owe him a lot. And uh, so he started this whole thing going, and then I and a number of others in the community has been helping his effort. So the plan that he had was to sort of open up this Jenkins as a platform to Ruby developers. You know, it's obviously easier when you can contribute in a language that you're most familiar with, and Ruby people just don't want to be seen by their peers to be coding in Java. So <laughs> we got to help them. So to do that, you know, we need to let them develop code in Ruby without writing Java code. And also, more importantly, I think with Ruby tools, by using the idioms that they are used to, as opposed to you know, the using the Java tools like Maven. So I suppose it's a little bit like you know, the Java developers won't use Makefile, right? I mean, we think that's like a legacy C++ stuff. So they felt the same way about the Java tool set. So we need to cater that. But at the same time, for this to be useful for the Jenkins users, this the end result doesn't still needs to look and feel like the same Jenkins plugin that doesn't have any noticeable difference from the Java plugins. So that effort has been running for a while to the point that now we have, I think, four or five plugins entirely written in Ruby that some of you might be already using it without noticing it. So there's a repository that contains the, all the necessary tools, the, uh, the runtime, the compiler-related stuff. And this also how houses the command line tool for Java, which is originally, I mean, sorry, command line tool for Jenkins, which is where originally the Charles got started. So the way it works is that you got the Jenkins at the lower uh, bottom layer, uh, you know, that's, that's having all the functionality. And then we embed JRuby inside it so that the same JVM would host the Ruby virtual machine as well. And then we developed a little bit of glue layer so that because um, I guess to make this underlying Jenkins platform look and feel nicer to the Ruby developers. And then the people can write code on top of it, or they can interface directly with Jenkins through JRuby. So, for example, the, this typical Java code that implements one of the extension points, by just using, by just having JRuby in it, you could sort of turn this into a, a equivalent Ruby code, which is somewhat, it's a, you know, almost like a straightforward transformation, but uh, by having this glue layer, you can even shrink it down to something that the Ruby developer would, would like, a feel more natural to it. And then so that's the, that's, the, that's the idea. So what I wanted to do was to actually show how it works. So um, not only just the runtime, we actually have the entire toolkit written uh, that's, uh, that you can use to help the development cycle. So this whole effort is in the gem called JPI. So you have to, you first you install JPI gem, which I've already done that. Um, and then the, if you run this command, you'll see what kind of things it can do. So first I'm going to generate like a skeleton JUC New York plugin maybe. And so that creates, uh, what is it? Oh, right, yeah, okay, because it's complaining because I'm doing this in a temp directory. So let me, let me move into my my Jenkins folder, um, JPI new JUC New York. So that creates a new plugin. And then um, this contains like a, I guess the gem that you can, you know, the gem file like typical Ruby project. And then this plugin spec file, um, which is a Ruby, little bit of Ruby script that describes what this plugin does. I guess the equivalent of equivalent to Maven module, I mean Maven poem. So um, I can then generate a skeleton. Um, I wanna generate the, uh, what, I, what I'm gonna generate. Um, I can generate like a builder and then maybe hello world builder. So I just gave the name to generate the code and then if you look at this stuff, uh, you see that it's, you know, it, kind of looks like, well, if you, if you have written Java plugin, you can see the similarity in it, but this is how we help people get 
bootstrapped quickly. I think most of people write plugins by pattern testing. So this is uh, the equivalent in Ruby. So here I'm going to do this now. Uh, hello world. Um, and then so I'm done with the plugin. So I can now run the server here to divide this. So if I run the API server, it starts the Jenkins instance on this. Uh, what is that? That's not pretty. Uh, that's because. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I know. Uh, because I got another server going. So I'm sorry. Let me. Yeah, so it complained that the port wasn't available. Yeah, so now it runs the server in this location with the plugin being developed, deployed already. So if I go to localhost 8080, you see that it's got some slightly different stuff because it's in the development mode. And, and it also runs slowly because it's in the development mode. And it's loading everything from as we type, but hopefully it'll come back. Yeah, so now if I create some job, and because we created a builder, um, we should see it here. Hello world builder. And then if you run it, we should see the output. Yeah, and then because this is a scripting language and not a compiled language, what I can do is uh, make the font a little bigger. Um, if I tweak the source code here on the fly, uh, from New York City, and then I just save it. And then I got this reload Ruby plugins. So if you just click that, and it reloads all the code on the fly. And so if you reload it, I and mean, if you run the build again, it's going to show the new message that it just picked out. Yeah? So that's, I think, uh, pretty handy. And then if I'm happy with what I've done, um, I can then package this app, JPI uh, build, which, oops. Oh, all right, so this needs to run on JRuby because we still rely on some of the same tools that we use for developing Java plugins. So I'm gonna use the RPM to switch to JRuby and then uh, JPI, what did I write, build. So that it creates the, um, the .hpi file in the end. Um, not sure what it's, ah, yeah, so it's running bundler to gather up all the dependencies. So whatever gems that you depend on, will be all bundled into this same stuff. And then the end result was packaged in a PKG vendor, uh, Wait, not gems, I guess it's PKG. So it's a Juice New York HPI 184 kilobyte plugin that you could deploy to your instance. So just like that. And then finally, um, I'm not gonna run this for real, but if you wanted to release it to the community update center, you can just, um, well, we need to actually tweak the, the manifest file a little bit so that it knows like, you know, like where are your repositories and so on. So this, for example, it's saying that it's claiming that it's got the deposition on GitHub, but of course we haven't created that. And so this, this didn't actually work very well if I try to run it, but um, I can run this command to package this plugin and upload that to the community uh, play center. So you can share it with the community. So we've got the RVM plugin, the VA grant plugin, and so on that's written in this fashion. Um, and it's, it's already capable of doing a lot. I guess you, know, you can write jobs, I mean, you can write views. There's all kinds of extension point generators available so that they bootstrap you with things. Um, so, so yeah, so that's, that's what it can do now. I guess I still have a bit more time on this. So what else can I try here? What else would be useful for me to try? Anything, any, any suggestions I could? Um, yeah, let's talk. Yeah, I, can, I guess I can talk a bit about views. Um, so I, for for now, it was, I was only showing the code. Um, this also has a templating support to um, to a uh, so that you can you can write the view fragments. I believe it goes to 
I'm doing this on the fly, so let's see if I can actually make this work. Um, so the name of the code was Hello World Builder. So I guess I need to create the Hello World Builder and then um, ERV. And so I could say maybe, I don't know, uh, this is JUC and I believe it will work. Oops, oh, I already killed it. Um, so I can run it from here. Uh, oh, because I was in the wrong directory. Okay, now it works. Depends on Thunder couldn't find it. Although this part actually shouldn't matter, so I'm a bit, it's a bit strange. So there are still a lot of work that needs to be done, but um, but I think it's already proven to be useful. Sorry, wrong name, I guess. Yeah, right, the Ruby people don't do camel case, do you? Um, uh, what was it? Um, the hello world underscore, hello world underscore builder. Uh, let's see if that could be, if that's sufficient. Mm, that's not quite, maybe it needs to be. Let me, let me go look at the cheat sheet uh, some of the, my other Ruby plugins. Um, views. Yeah, it looks correct to me. Um, I'm not exactly sure why this isn't doing what it's supposed to do. Well, I guess the people, so we have the people working on this project has weekly uh, hack session where we gather in the WebEx session every Thursday morning. Actually, in this time zone, it's not morning. It's more like 11, I think it's 11 a.m. in Thursday to work on this stuff. So it was today, even though I couldn't be there, so if you're interested in joining the airport and help out, or if you're interested in writing plugins on the top of this, then we'd love to talk to have you on that show. Um, so let's hope if the reboot has fixed it. Yeah, I guess what, for whatever it was, so it was <laughs> that was it. So I mean, it, so yeah, so it kind of you know you can use the ERV, you can use Hamel, um, and so on. So that's it for what I had for this part. Any 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 questions on this? No, not, not here. Writing, uh, so I uh, well, I'm still writing bulk of the code in Java. I guess I just I mean the, the tooling and runtime support and so on. It's just uh, better than in Java. But I'm starting to write more Ruby code in various places, and I I enjoy the extent that I'm doing it. Yeah. So that's partly why I'm kind of interested in this effort and. Uh, yeah, it's been interesting to talk to this Ruby X for. So. Oh, uh, so the Groovy actually works already pretty well um, because the Groovy interrupts with Java very nicely. Um, I guess, let's see, what's, what's specifically missing? Um, I suppose there might be some issues around annotation processing. I remember filing a bug against the Gmaven plugin for that. 
so that might need a bit of work, but um, it should be should be easy. I think it's a matter of someone trying it out, and then you know, if they identify a few kinks, I can. I guess the the other you know of course I guess on on the on speaking on the other languages, of course when we mention Ruby, the Python guys get excited too. That look, let's do this with Python. Um, so. There has been a number of people interested in it, but I guess we so far hasn't had this person who would drive the effort. You know, it takes someone like Charles to actually drive it, even though it, you know it's, we, we, a lot of other people chime in and help what they can. It still takes someone to to carry the flag. So we are, hope, we are hoping that someone will do that for Python, and I can I can help. Does this pose any particular challenges or problems in your mind with regards to the expansion of just the Jenkins code base itself? And whenever you try to build and test Jenkins against now more plugins and more code base, does that pose any particular problems? Um, I think there's already enough challenge there that just by the fact of having 500 Java plugins is a big enough challenge that the adding Ruby to the mix I don't think is, is particularly bad. Um, I mean, from Jenkins' perspective, it actually all looks like just a regular Java code. And there's a little bit of different bootstrapping going on, but so it's not, I don't think, I don't think it's uh, having a problem. But I, I do see, so one interesting incident that we had was someone re-implemented, so I mean, but this by itself happens sometimes, so that someone implemented a plugin without noticing that there's already the plugin that does the exact same thing, because you just can't discover it, right? Um, so someone did that, but did de implement a Java plugin in Ruby. But I'd imagine for some people, it'd be actually easier to contribute in Ruby. So you might end up duplicating the same functionality in different languages, which is, if that happens in wide enough scale, that would be unfortunate. But for the time being, I think we are more interested in just having more people try this out and make sure that we have a solid foundation in place so that people can start building plugins. So, yeah. Okay, so uh, if this part is good, let me move on to this another one. Um.